This is the rhythm of each and every day. It's how they mark time. In the town where the Russians measure their progress in ruined homes and frayed mines. In this gloom, mental and literal, Ludmilla and her friends have been living for three months without break. Who asked the Russians to come here? What have they come to free us from? Our families? Our homes? From our lives? Vera tells us she has nowhere else to hide. How long can you stay? Until it ends, she says. So for the foreseeable future, home is the basement of the town's hospital. No running water, no mains power, no way to care for patients in the dark, unless they can plug in this generator. And that too will require nerves of steel. Uh, how are things in your hospital now? Do you have the medicine, no, the no. power? Uh, no, and we have no patients here at the moment. You're, you're used to you're used to that all day, <laughs> all day, every day. Every my job. Julia Poleg is where the Russians were stopped in their tracks, but now its people are marooned in the firing line. This is an unremarkable town whose great misfortune is to be so close to Russian lines. They are just two miles down the road here. And that means that almost every day for the past three months, it's come under attack. Elena never imagined her mother's twilight years would be spent here in the pitch black of a bunker. Katerina is deaf, but she can feel the bombs land. She remembers the Nazis here, Elena says, but she thinks the Russians are worse. The defense of this territory depends on men like Alexander, a priest in peacetime. He is, he says, answering a new calling to fight. He makes a shelter beneath a tree from the almighty, all-seeing Russian drones. The worst thing, he tells us, are the mortars that drop without warning. And the proof is all around us in these broken streets. The Russians know what they're doing. It's just that they don't care very much about the consequences. This enormous crater was once a simple village home and the family who lived here had even written people on the gate. Humanity is missing wherever you look. And while the war has turned east, Ukraine cannot afford to neglect this long southern flank. Of course, they have enough ammunition for war. They prepared for this war. They have enough of everything. So it's you who needs more? We need more. We didn't prepare. So Captain Bistrik's men have dug trench after trench and await a Russian reckoning. You have the heart for the fight, but you don't yet have the weapons that you need to win. You're right. Exactly, exactly. We have soldiers that are uh, with uh, st strong spirit, but we don't have enough uh, weapon for them. They are ready in front line to attack Russians and liberate our territory. In this one small town, 21 civilians have died in the daily shelling. It's a collective trauma. In the attack on the market, Jana lived, she says, only because a neighbor pushed her to the floor. She is clearly still in shock. Thunder. The storm, unlike Russia's bombardment, soon passes. Over the freshly dug row of graves that advance into no man's land on the edge of town. In this deadly standoff, it is the only front line that's moving forward. John Ray, ITV News, Julia Poiling.